Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify a rational expression by factoring using our special factoring techniques, which include the difference of two squares as well as a perfect square trinomial. Now that doesn't mean we're going to be have to forget um, factoring out of GCF, which we're still going to use. But the main important thing is not only just factoring, but understanding the division property as well as when to apply it and constraints of our denominator, which again I'll talk our way through. But the main important thing is when we're looking to simplify a rational expression by factoring, we're going to look in the numerator as well as look in the denominator and see what exactly can we factor. Well, when we're looking into factoring, you know, first thing we always want to see if we can factor a GCF out, anything that they have in common. And in the numerator, they have nothing in common, so I can't do, I can't factor this by simplifying any ways. However, in my denominator, um, you can see that I have x squared minus four. I can't factor out a GCF. However, I can use the difference of two squares to factor this. So therefore, I'm going to have x plus 2 divided by, now when I factor this using the difference of two squares, I'm going to have x plus 2 times x minus 2. And now you can see that the expression x plus 2 is the same in the numerator as well as the denominator. And since in the denominator it's separated by multiplication, I can apply the division pro property. So therefore, those are going to divide to 1, and I'm just going to be left with 1 over x minus 2. Now, when we write it now, if I want to write my constraints, I can say x minus 2 cannot equal 0. So the values that x minus 2 is going to equal 0 is going to be at 2. So I'll say my constraint is going to be x cannot equal 2. Now going over um, to this example here, um, now in my numerator I see that I have a binomial and of course it's a perfect, it's a square and it's the difference. So I know I can simplify using the difference of two squares. So I'll factor that out by x minus 4 times x plus 4. And that's what the you know, difference of two squares is really helpful for. You, know, you can factor it very, very quickly. Um, when looking at my denominator, though, I don't have a difference of two squares, but I do see that I can factor out using the GCF. 2x and negative 8 both share a 2, so I'm going to divide out the 2. And when I do that, I'm left with an x minus 4. Again, making sure that we notice that our terms our expressions are separated by multiplication, I can now divide out the x minus 4's, and therefore I'm left with x plus 4 divided by 2. And then I don't need a constraint here because I know 2 is not equal to 0, and that would be my only constraint is if, um, if I had a variable in there, I'd just have to say that it cannot equal 0. All right, so now in the next example, we again have another difference of two squares. It's very kind of obvious. Once you work through a lot of these problems, you can kind of quickly see them. So I can factor this out. I know that five, um, five times negative five is going to give me minus five, and they're going to add up to give you a zero as a middle term. So I'll factor that out. And then now I have a, um, a perfect square trinomial, which again, you can see 25 makes your perfect square. But instead of having no middle term, I now have a middle term negative 10. Uh, negative 10x. But I understand that if I wrote this as a perfect square trinomial, which would be x minus 5 times x minus 5, um, though when I multiply, when I FOIL this out, it's going to be that perfect square trinomial. So again, this is just through a lot of practice of knowing how to factor perfect square trinomials. Well, what's nice about at least using this again is you can see that since they're separated by multiplication, I can apply the division property, and the x minus 5s will divide to 1. So I'm left with x plus 5 divided by x minus 5, where x cannot equal a positive 5. Because if I had positive 5 in there, if I put a 5 in for the x, then 5 minus 5 would be 0, and I'd have my denominator equal to 0. So I'm just writing in that constraint. All right, in this last example, um, this one really gets students you know, confused. And actually, it's the exact same type of problem as this one. The only difference is um, I need to factor out a GCF first. So what I notice here is I have some terms that have some common, or I have um, expressions that have common uh, factors of them. So in the numerator, I can factor out a 2x. So when I factor out a 2x, I'm left with x squared minus 4. In the denominator, when I factor out a 2, I'm left with an x squared plus 4x plus 4. And now we can see that first, these 2s, those divide out using the division property. Here is another example of difference of two squares. So I have x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And then in my denominator, that is an example of a perfect square trinomial, which would be x plus 2 times x plus 2. Again, you can see that each expression is separated by multiplication. So therefore, these two um, expressions can divide out. And I'm left with x times x minus 2 all over x plus 2, where x cannot equal negative 2, because again, that would make your denominator 0. 
And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just your basic technique for simplifying rational expressions by using your special factoring techniques. Thanks. Hello.